the Protestants. S.R. Maitland, 1792 to 1866, was the librarian to the Archbishop of Canterbury. He was appointed by Archbishop William Howdy, keeper of the manuscripts at Lambeth Palace, London, where the massive library of the Church of England was kept. It was then that Dr. Maitland discovered this futurist view of the Revelation as taught by Francisco Ribera from Spain, and he published it just for the sake of interest. These events began in 1826. At this time, the vast majority of American Protestants were historicists. It is understood that Maitland had much contempt for the Reformation, and he did not believe that the papacy was the predicted anti-Christian apostasy or beast of Daniel in the Apocalypse. I challenge you to find one Protestant who believed the futuristic teachings of the 70 weeks before 1826. It is impossible. Dr. Maitland wrote a prophetic pamphlet in which he challenged the generally understood year-day view of the 1260 days of Daniel and the Revelation. This was in 1826. In 1829 and 1830, a second inquiry into the same subjects appeared. To make things worse, in 1833, the Oxford Tracts were published, whose chief object was to deprostatize the Church of England. Error was now tumbling into the Protestant theological mainstream. A consuming virus had set in, and it will take its toll for decades to come. In 1851, the brilliant Eliot published the fourth edition of the Horae Apocalypticae. In this massive work, he refutes the most intellectual and witty counter-schemes, several which have already been mentioned. However, his main concern was the damage already being done by Dr. Maitland. He addresses this concern in the preface to the fourth edition. At the time when the author's thoughts were first seriously directed to the study of prophecy, the Reverend S. R. Maitland's publications had begun to make an evident impression on English theological students, more especially such as were investigators of prophecy, and had caused doubt in the minds of many, not only as to the correctness of the old Protestant anti-Romish views of the apocalypse and of the prophetic year-day theory therewith essentially connected, but doubt whether the apocalypse had as yet received any fulfillment in the past history of the church in Christendom. Maitland's errors were magnified by John Nelson Darby, 1800 to 1882. Darby read the pamphlets that Maitland produced and was persuaded. This man was the founder of the Plymouth Brethren. He thought this was a great revelation. With such a simplified view of Bible prophecy, there was no need to understand the historic application. It was all in the future. Darby wrote several volumes on this new understanding of prophecy. He influenced many people, including Cyrus Ingerson Schofield, 1843 to 1921. To make things worse, Darby's views were incorporated in the Schofield Reference Bible, 1909. Darby, in turn, was followed by William Kelly. This relationship, which included many others, is summarized by Alexander Rees in his unmatched scholarly refutation of the pre-tribulation rapture teaching. The rapture theory will be discussed later, entitled The Approaching Advent of Christ. About 1830, a new school arose within the fold of premillennialism that sought to overthrow what, since the apostolic age, had been considered by all premillennialists as established results and to institute in their place a series of doctrines that had never been heard before. The school I refer to is that of the Brethren or Plymouth Brethren, founded by J. N. Darby. It will be convenient to give a summary of the new doctrines with extracts from writings of the four pioneer writers who filled evangelical Christendom with their teachings. I refer to Darby's lectures on the second coming and notes on the apocalypse, Kelly's lectures on the second coming and kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ's coming again and lectures on the book of Revelation, Malter's plain papers and prophetic subjects, and C.H.M.'s papers on the Lord's coming. In America, the new teachings were spread abroad through W.E. Blackstone's Jesus is Coming and numerous writings of F.W. Grant, J.M. Gray, A.C. Gabelin, F.C. Ottman, and C.I. Schofield, but all these followed the lead of the British, or Irish, pioneers. Schofield's reference Bible represents a lifelong study of the scriptures and is hailed in all the world by brethren as setting forth their views on the interpretation of scripture especially of prophecy and dispensational truth, 
and naturally, Schofield was for a generation an assiduous and admiring student of Darby's writings. In A.C. Gabelin's many writings, the influence and spirit of William Kelly are everywhere evident. Today, the ripple effect of these men's teachings fills the Christian bookstores. I am not attacking their great Christian lives, only that which they wrote on eschatology. Fortunately, many students of Bible prophecy are turning away from the futurist school of interpretation. It is to be hoped that they will not be deceived by the new wave of preterist teachers. Theirs is not the true alternative. The erroneous futurist predictions during the decade of the 1980s have left many people confused and disappointed with prophecy teachers. God's people are once again recognizing the providential hand of the Lord upon them. They are refusing to endure teachings which are confusing and contradicting. I hope this brief chronology will encourage you to question the roots of many prophetic teachings you have heard over the years. Remember, if the root is bad, how much more rotten the fruit will be. Don't let men keep you from being a Berean.